Man, we're fired up over here. It's the best time of year heading into that last preseason game. Who's going to make it, the Dreamers, or the Dreamers going to have their dreams end here? It's going to be an exciting one Sunday in the Dome. Make sure you get out there, check it out. We're going to have all the breakdowns on New Orleans Stop Football, so if you aren't signed up yet, make sure you do that today. Camp 24 is the code. There's about 10 days left on that. Once the regular season starts, we're going to cut that code off. Get locked in today for the whole season. You get all of our news, our analysis, the pregame show, the postgame show, early release on the podcast, a live blog where we're doing analysis all throughout the game, giving you insight you can't get anywhere else. So use that code CAMP24, get locked in for the whole entire season. Do that today. And if you're already locked in, we appreciate you for joining us live on the show and getting to watch it before anybody else. It's just one of the many perks of membership to New Orleans Football. Welcome back to another episode of the show presented by PJ's Coffee. We're at our location here on Airline Drive, coming to you from the Mobile Oshner Health Podcast Studio. And if you need to get your day started, come by PJ's. Get a cup of coffee and drive up here in a car you got from Matt Bowers. They have the best customer care, the best prices, the best car buying experience that you can find. Any type of car type of car you want matt's pretty much got you at one of his many locations all throughout the region go check them out today get yourself that new car that you deserve and drive over here to pj's we got a great breakdown for you guys today we're going to talk about everything you need to know going into this last game who are the guys that that need to have a good game who are the guys that can't afford to have a bad game so much more after this quick word from our wonderful sponsors who support this show Oshner Health inspires healthier lives and stronger communities through a combination of standard-setting expertise, quality, and connection not found anywhere else in the region. To learn more about how Oshner empowers people to get well and stay well, visit oshner.org. Long live you. The New Orleans Dot Football Show is proudly presented by PJ's Coffee. PJ's Coffee has some of the best drinks that you can find. They have locations all over the city. They have pastries and everything else you need to get your day started. So go check them out. It's good! The Saints score! Saints score! Score big with Saints score! Win up to $100,000! Enter the second chance drawings for cool Saints prize packages! Play Saints score scratch offs from the lottery! New Orleans Dot Football is proudly sponsored by Urban South Brewery, the makers of Paradise Park Lager. I love supporting local breweries, and when looking for a refreshing, easy drinking beer, I always recommend Paradise Park. In fact, I think it might be the best game day beer out there. If you want something a little lighter, try Paradise Light. It's everything I love about Paradise Park with just 96 calories and 2.6 carbs. And if you're looking for a family-friendly place to watch the game, I'd recommend Urban South's Tap Room in the Lower Garden District. They've got 15 TVs, 30 unique beers on top, and mouth-watering Urban Smash Burgers. The whole family will want to make Urban South their new living room, because at Urban South, they take laid back seriously. Looking for the best insurance coverage at the lowest price? Look no further than Chabert Insurance, the Earhart Agency. They are a local independent insurance agency right here in New Orleans, specializing in home, flood, and auto insurance. Their agents are born and raised in the area and understand our community's unique needs and the homeowner's insurance crisis our residents are currently in. At Air Insurance, the Air Hair Agency, their dedicated team will shop every available carrier in the market, ensuring you get the most comprehensive coverage at the lowest possible price. They know your time is valuable, which is why they work diligently to provide you with the quotes as soon as possible. Why settle for less when you can have the best? Trust Air Insurance, the Air Hair Agency, to protect what matters most to you. I do. I've been a client of theirs since 2021. When we couldn't find someone to insure our house because of the big oak tree growing over top, Chabert worked until they found someone that would work with us and give us the protection that we need to feel safe in our new home. Call them today at 504-326-6526 or visit them online at Protected by Chabert. That's 504-326-6526. Chabert Insurance, the Earhart Agency, your local insurance experts. Hard Hide Punch Tool Strawberry Whiskey is an 86 proof blend of aged wheat bourbon, American light whiskey, and fresh Punch Tool strawberries. Blended in New Orleans, it is not for the thin skinned. Look for it in your favorite stores, bars, and restaurants. New Orleans Stop Football is proud to be sponsored by Firehouse Subs. Make sure you check out their location on Veterans Boulevard. All right, let's get into the show.
Welcome into this episode of the New Orleans Dot Football Show here at PJ's Coffee on Airline Drive. I'm Brandon Thomas, joined by Mike Triplett and Nick Underhill. It is now time for our first segment presented by Urban South. Look, the last preseason game is this Sunday as the Saints take on the Titans at 1 o'clock Central. You know, we got to adjust kind of back to that time zone. But a lot of people are going to be trying to make their claim to get on the 53-man roster. Who do we think makes this roster based off of Sunday's game? I don't know if anybody's making the roster based off Sunday's game. I, I feel like a lot of this stuff is is set. Like I feel like a lot of a lot of positions we kind of know who's going to make the team, who isn't. I think there's a couple spots where it might be like a special teams guy, like somebody that has a great gunner rep or something they could get on the team. Somebody like like uh, Stanley Morgan, I feel like possibly has a chance of doing that. Um, you know, if Will Harris has a great game on special team, like teamers, somebody that that has a chance of making it on special teams. I think it's it's maybe at that level. Um, you know, I think I think the great bubble players on this team, like a, like a Rico Payton, I just don't think that there's room for him to make it given the depth at, at cornerback. So he could have a 10 target, zero catch game, and I don't know that he makes it unless he makes such a strong case that they feel like we can't allow this guy to get out of the building and then maybe maybe they keep him on the 53 and they cut, you know, an older veteran player, use their practice squad elevations to protect him or something like that. But like it would have to be an extreme circumstance. And I don't know that they have a player like that that could do it. Um, you know, I think a wide receiver is possibly a, a little bit a little bit open for some spots. But I, I kind of feel like we know the five names there. And, and I don't really think it's going to be, um, you know, somebody else unless it's special teams. So funny. So I have four things listed here. Special teams, Morgan, Amadi, Teamer, Will Harris. Gunners in the first two games have been Harrison Teamer in the first game, Bradford and Enrico Payton in the second game. But, I mean, exactly. When, that's a little boring, but it's, it's very true. That's how you make the team probably more than any of these other positions we're going to talk about. But I did have wide receivers first on my list. Um, so you said we know the five, so let's go through it. We know um, Alave, Shahid, Cedric Wilson. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we think A.T. Perry. Yep. We think Bob, Bob means. Say, uh, Bob means. I, I'm changing the order. I think Bob means. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, had a I forgot about Bob yeah. means. Things okay. have changed so yeah. much as I, we like got about it. You yeah. know, I, I agree. I, I, agree. Feel, I feel like AT slipped behind him. Yeah, AT agree. might have slipped behind Aquamania St. Brown, too. I think he makes a team based on on who he is. I think St. Brown... St. Brown's maybe a guy, but I don't think it's I don't think it's third preseason game. I think it's yeah. probably more about, like, how do the numbers shake out right. overall. Um, so either there's room for him or or there isn't. And you know, AT a- is someone that could that could use a nice little a nice little exclamation point. I think on the yeah. end of his his preseason. I mean, I, I think he's done enough to make the team. He's young. He has upside. I would be surprised if he gets cut. But I would not be mind blown if he gets cut. It wouldn't be one of those like I I know where I was at and what I was doing when I heard Jimmy Graham got traded. It wouldn't be one of those moments. I know where I was at when Pierre Thomas got cut. Like those are the ones where you're like, oh my god, like. You know, kind of surprised. Like, I wouldn't, it wouldn't take me like that. Yeah. An uh, explanation point that I think I need to see on Sunday is Will Harris because he has to make his hay on special teams. We know what he could do at safety, and he's kind of variable. He could play a little bit of cornerback also. But I think with Jordan Howden kind of trying to solidify himself in that spot, Harris needs to make some hay. Even though Jordan Howden is pretty good at special teams too, I think that elevation of him and him being multifaceted at that point can, ha- can help Will Harris kind of boost up no you're you're absolutely right about that like it's good that will harris and jonathan abram and and jordan howden are all capable of playing safety the one you know but darren rizzi makes that decision of who's invaluable i think that's also true at linebacker i mean i have not finished predicting my my 53 but like kalika hudson and anthony orgy are both going to get a ton of run in this game i think especially if demarco jackson is still hurt with the calf injury he left with yesterday um but darren rizzi decides uh, do I need all six of those linebackers? Are they all invaluable to me? Or are Hudson and Orgy and, and DeMarco Jackson fighting for just two spots? Uh, I think that's a special teams decision. Um, going back to receiver, though, real quick, um, I agree with you. I think Equinemius St. Brown is, is totally dependent on do they need him active in week one. Might be dependent on Rashid Shahid's health status. St. Brown is also one of those guys, and we're going to talk about this later, who he could not make the 53, and they could keep all his stuff in his locker, yep. and they could have a prearranged agreement. You're on the practice squad since he won't have to go through uh, waivers. He feels absolutely like a candidate for that. But a, a name we didn't mention at all is Mason Tipton. He barely practiced yesterday. He did have his uniform back on. He did, like, individual, and that's about it, um, walk through. Um, 
Is it already too late for him? Does he have to play in this game? Can he make the 53 when we earlier thought for sure he would? Yeah, look, he, he's been so out of sight, out of mind, that, that he slipped my mind on this, and this segment is made for him. Yeah. Like, it is made for him. <laughs> he, he is the guy that needs a big game to make the team. He needs to remind everybody who he is. But, yeah, out of sight, out of mind, not practicing, other people are making plays. You've lost your momentum. Like, you have to go out there and remind everyone – who you are and what you can do if you want to make make the 53-man roster. There was a point earlier in camp that, I mean, it was like he's making the team. Like, they were talking about him like he was making the team. Yeah. They, he was kind of the first guy to move from from the, the two field to the one field, and he was making plays still. But it just feels like he's yeah. been he's been passed up and kind of kind of forgotten a little bit. And, um, yeah, it's kind of, kind of you know, the, the DA thing. Like, if you aren't seeing him, you aren't remembering him. And, look, I'll say this about that. Like, I saw a lot of reaction on Twitter about him. Like, is somebody who's who's watching this team every week is frustrated about how long it takes. You know, you're like, where is this guy? Why is he not coming back? Why are his injuries taking so long? Man, I, I like that he's holding people accountable. Like, I understand if you dislike it, but we sit here every single week. I was first man on the bus. Like, they aren't holding anyone accountable. They're letting too, be, too many people get away with stuff. Like, put that pressure on them. And, like, yeah, guys get hurt and all that stuff. But, like – the frustration's real, and, you know, I think that the subtext of that is to everybody, though, that, like, hey, look, these lingu- – like, this stuff, like, you need to be doing everything you can do to get back to the field. I do believe if DA's speaking out, there's a reason for it. Okay. I, I like the accountability. Like, I, I can't sit here and be like, I no, don't do not do it this way. Selective accountability. Just have standards across the board, man. I, I like it. Um, Tipton, someone, though, that needs to go out here and show what he can do. Look, I mean, it takes us a little off track, but I think it's a good talking point. I, I wish we had put it in the script. That it's unmistakable the DA has has chosen to take that as an approach this year, and and look, maybe some people don't like it. I, I don't I don't really have a good gauge for where the fan base is on it, um, where the locker room is on it. But a- anybody who complains about it, how could anyone complain about any change the head coach has decided to make after the results of the last two seasons? Like, it's what Mickey Loomis and Dennis Allen were saying in their post game press conference, like. Like, we've let the standard slip around here, and that has to change. So if he's trying to change the standard, how, how can you not support that, at least yeah. that he recognizes the need and that he's stuck to it? No, look, I can tell you what the locker room's thinking. Like, Tyron Matthew had a tweet about it. Like, yeah. someone was complaining about it a couple of weeks ago, the first time it happened, and he was like, no, this is what we want. Like, Bruce yeah. Arians used to do this. This is what good coaches do. They they hold people accountable. you got to get healthy. you got to get on the field. Um, you know, I, I think – you know, I've had private conversations with some guys who, 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 you know, are frustrated about how long it takes some people to come back from injuries, too. So I, I think it's it's a thing. Like, I think yeah. it's a thing that that needs to be done. And, I, you know, I like I like to say, is it going to be effective? You know, I don't know. Like, he's still not on the field, but the standards there and kind of putting that heat on people, I think is I think it's good, man. Like anything you're doing to hold people accountable. I like it. And it's not something that he just came up with through training camp. He came off the hip with it with the first date when Kendra Miller went out. He said, look, Kendra has to find a way back out here so we can see what he could do. And he continued to do it throughout training camp when it came to A.T. Perry, when it came to different people on the roster that needed to be out there to show what, what they can show on the roster to make the roster. So I think I think personally that it's a great move that he's made and if he sticks with it throughout the season it's going to pay dividends on the team completely. He, here's the thing about it though like i don't want him saying that about someone that breaks a leg as a torn ACL. oh no 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 like, <laughs> no, no, no. Like, he, and there, there's a level of like legitimacy to the injuries like there is a history here though there's a history here and i think it just kind of feeds into it a little bit and, and you know i think it's more than than one thing you know i think go like saying it because there are certain people that come up and they're like no they're rehabbing like i think it's it's being done in a way that that is, you know, I don't. I think it's it's calculated to a certain degree. Uh, just At least put, I hope. I would hope it is. Yeah. Just to put a bow on the uh, top conversation. When you said we know who the five receivers are, I think Stanley Morgan Jr. is, is separate. He absolutely can make this team. I might predict he's going to make this team. That's a special teams conversation. And the only other name I had on here that we didn't talk about is Isaiah Foskey. Does he need to play well to make the team, or is he on the team even if he has another dud? I would think just because where he was selected at last year, he's going to make the team, but he does need to show. He can't just have all those reps and not show that he's taken a jump and increase in skill. It feels too soon to give up on him for me. Like, it's a little too soon to give up on him, but I don't expect – like, I'm not expecting – when I think about the team, I'm not assuming production from that spot. Yeah. It's crazy. Our next segment is presented by Shaber Insurance, the Earhart Agency. A lot of people came back from injury this week. A lot of key people came back from injury this week. Alvin Kamara, 
Jawan Johnson, Paulson Adebo, Tally Fawaga. Those guys are probably going to play Sunday because they got some run during practice this week. Who is the most important player that came back from injury? Well, I don't know if they're going to play for sure. I mean, I don't think you throw Kamara and, and Adebo out there if the other starters aren't out there. It, it'll be curious to see how they use them, and, and we don't even know if the starters are going to play at all. Fawaga will absolutely play. I bet Jawan Johnson gets a couple snaps to, to get back into it. Who's the most important? I could go back and forth on all four of them. I mean, I would have listed Jawan Johnson fourth, but he feels so important when you see him on the field. And you're like, ah, oh, big target. As Nick said, maybe the best yeah. one with Yak. Um, I want to say Alvin Kamara because none of the other running backs have done anything in his absence. But shockingly, I think it's Talia Safawaga. I just it, if we didn't feel pretty good about his ability at that left tackle, I think I think we're one. If Eric McCoy, Cesar Ruiz, and Talia Fawaga aren't out there. Then it's like I think I think it's throw in the towel mode on the offensive line. They yeah. need those three to keep the whole thing from falling apart. I'll give you that. Yeah, I mean I, I think it's important to see Alvin out there just to get the reps. He was always going to come back. Um, I, I'd be surprised if we see him in the game. I would. I, I don't. Adebo maybe. I don't know. Like Alvin feels like above that line of guys who who play in the third preseason game. I don't think they're all playing in this game. I know for sure they're not all playing in this game. I wouldn't be surprised if some play in this game. Um, but I, he kind of feels like above that, like, you know, if they, my, my guess is, and we're going to find more out and we'll hopefully have it nailed down. But like right now, Friday before practice, before hearing DA talk, I doubt he gives us the plan for the game. But my my guess on it would be is that like the type of players who get vet days probably won't play in this game. And like the guys who don't get vet days right. might play in this game. Like, you know, there's probably going to be a handful of starters that that do play. Um but I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, it's going to be interesting to see if they want that last dress rehearsal from the offense because, like, the first two games weren't great. I, like, I think anything's on the table. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't put, like, a Cam Jordan, a Tyron Matthew, um, you know, those type of players out there in this game. Demario, like, I think he's he's good to, to rest. Um, do you want Pete Werner in the game to get a couple couple more reps before? Maybe He hasn't even done team in practice yet. But, like, if he's ready, like, do you want him to handle, like, some communication? Like, yeah. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't know how they're going to handle it. Um, but I definitely wouldn't want some of those, you know, like, like I don't need to see nothing else from Tyron or Cam or, or DeMario for sure. Um, if you were able to guarantee season-long health for any one of these four guys, who would you pick? I I mean, it's I Fua- can't, it's Fuaga. I can't believe sure. I'm going to say Fuaga, but yeah, yeah over Alvin Kamara, yeah. Jawan Johnson, Paul Sanu, Fuaga. Yeah, that's the one you'd want to guarantee. Season yeah, because if you from. know that side is good, yeah. then you're. Yeah. I think I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like if if you take Fuaga out, like you're one injury away from ha- like having to play padding no matter what, like no uh, matter what happens, like no, no, yeah. nope. Like you got to have you got to have that one sure thing at that spot. Top, top. Like, you can't win with with two replacement. You can't win with with. A replacement level player at left tackle and right tackle. You just can't. It's bad business. Yeah. I, I would say top of my list has to be Jawan Johnson. Like you said, a lot of those other players can also jump to the top. But I think just because he hasn't played throughout the whole summer, he needs to have a chance to get his legs under him. He said it the other day. If you tell him it takes eight weeks to come back, he'll try to come back sooner than that. So I think him and just his wanting to be out there kind of he, get, he needs to have some run. Who, who are the four? It was Adebo and Kamara, who I think we all agree are the two best players. Yeah. But Fuaga and Jawan Johnson, less depth behind them. My like my, my depth chart on this, like top one one to four mm-hmm. on like the affordability, like least to, to most affordable yeah. to lose. I would go Fuaga one, Alvin two, um, Jawan three, Adebo four. I might flip flop Adebo and Jawan. I mean, they don't have much behind Jawan, but I, you know, Adebo was practically a Pro Bowler last year. Jawan needs to show me that he's that he's invaluable, you know, the irreplaceable you, performance. That's right. I mean, I, I'm just looking at like yeah. you can have Marshawn, yeah. Alante, Kool Aid, and and uh, Gene Charles, and like, man, if you told me like you, I, I would, I would, you could lose two starters at that position, yeah. and I would probably still feel okay because like they yeah. just. Yeah. They scheme no, so well, and they like it's almost like the offensive line thing during the Breeze era. Like the corners keep going out, and you're like, "Oh my God, they're screwed!" And then it's like they gave up 47 yards to, to receivers on the outside in this game, and it's like, "How did they do that?" Like yeah. they're so good at covering that stuff up. And the thing they might do better than anything else, like legitimately, is find these like DBs off the street that they put into their scheme yeah. and. They play well. They go somewhere else. They get paid, like, and then they just bring in the next tier. And it's like, yeah. you know, how how are they going to replace? You know, 
Uh, man, who was the guy last year that went to – yeah, Yadam. Like Yadam. How are they yeah. going to replace Yadam? Great depth. Should they keep him? And then it's like, then you see Gene Charles and, and yeah. Rajon Wright, and it's like, oh, okay. The two guys they brought in over the last 10 days have both been kind of balling in practice, yep. too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, let's roll into our next segment presented by New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Trevor Penning, <laughs> we talked about him in this last segment, too. He caught, he caught a little bit. But he's kind of led the Saints players in mentions on this show just because there's so many question marks surrounding him. Our daily his, Trevor Penning segments. Basically, <laughs> basically, basically, over this last week, we got to see Ole Udo come in and play a little bit of right tackle, and they kind of split reps during the team periods. But who do we think gets more play this game? And more importantly, does this affect the week one decision on who's going to start? Who do we think gets more play yeah, this like week? How, I, I, I wonder how they're going to do it in this game. Like, Will they give Udo a game there? Will they rotate like they do in team drills where Penning gets the first series, Udo gets the second series? I think one way or another we're going to see – we don't even know if we're going to see the entire first string offensive line out there at all, but I I think we're going to see more Udo sooner than we've seen before, and I think absolutely it's still wide open for the week one decision. Yeah. I mean, here, here's the thing. Like, they aren't going to come out and say Udo is, is ahead or is close the gap until it's done. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, when there's, like, the daily updates, they're going to keep back and penning until until there's nothing to back anymore. So, I take that, uh, uh, you know, I don't I don't buy it. Yeah. I don't buy that. I mean, he might be a little bit ahead, but, like, you know, the public support of confidence or whatever, like, I don't – Yeah. I, I, I think it's done because it has to be done because they aren't going to say, well, this guy, like, no, we're opening it up because – we're disappointed. The actions show us that they are disappointed yeah. and they've opened it up. If, if they felt good about it or that he had the lead, like, you know, for sure, they, they wouldn't even open it up. So I think it's wide open. Um, I, I'm going to say 50 50 use. I think I, I bet they get used the same. Uh, all right. Since we know how to read tea leaves, this is maybe the better question. What, what should fans read into what they see on Sunday. If Udo is starting, do you think that means the decision's been made already? I think Penning will start this game. Yeah, I think Penning will start. If Udo starts, I don't think the decision's been made, but I think it's, it's you know, I think that you can just toss away the whole, <laughs> like, everything, and it's just this is this is a wide open. Yeah. Everybody's lining up at the blocks, and, you know, this, this is up for grabs 100%. I think it already is. Um, Penning is getting more first team snaps in practice than Udo. He is. Um, I find it interesting though that like like Hergel goes in with uh, or or Landon Young goes in with Udo and like they keep Lucas Patrick out there. Like yeah. I I kind of feel like Door B might be like the whole. I maybe I'm too cynical. I think Door B is really really Door A. I wish they would have did this a week ago. I wish they would have did it a week ago so you can have Penning have full run during the San Francisco game, and then in this game, you can give it to Udo. But I think you – can, You can still do that. I mean, Penning had the full run in that game. You could still do that. Yeah. You're yeah. still open for that. Yeah. But I, you just – I don't think he's going to – I don't think the whole offense is going to be Yeah. Like, are we going to see Eric McCoy out there? Like, I don't I know. I doubt it. Man, I don't – there's a strong case to be made for, like, one more series by the starters. Like, yeah. or two. Like, I, I – I would like to, and if you give Alvin and Tyron and Cam and Demario a day off, you can still run that whole offensive line out there. That they, they do need to work together. I mean, Eric McCoy and Caesar Ruiz aren't necessarily vet rest des- rest day guys either. May- maybe run the whole first string offensive line out there again. Yeah, I think they try to exhaust all of their options with Penny. So I think yeah. they're going to give him more usage in this game, and I do think it's going to come down to who starts Week One. I mean, like you said earlier, D hasn't outright said that Penning lost the job. He keeps on saying that Penning is ahead, Penning is ahead. But I think this is going to put it on tape that he's not ahead. So it's very I, interesting. I'm glad you just mentioned exhaust all their options because I was about to make like kind of a, a an a- analogy with the gas tank. Yeah. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, I've been running with the orange light on for about three <laughs> days now. As soon as I leave PJs, I need to find the closest <laughs> gas station. That's where we are with Penny, I think, right now. For sure. We're going to hit a quick break, and when we come back, Michael detail his story that he did on Taysom Hill and more on New Orleans Football. Total Maintenance is one of the largest locally owned home and commercial service providers in South Louisiana. They were founded in 1980 and served the greater New Orleans and Baton Rouge markets. And Total Maintenance wants to show some love to our NOF listeners. They have a membership program that gets you two tune-up visits for AC and heating, as well as club membership discounts of 15% on all repairs, 
half off of all diagnostic charges and three-year warranties on most repairs for membership clients. This is usually priced at the low price of $24.95 a month per system, but if you tell Total Maintenance that you found them through NOF, they'll lower the price to $20.95 per month per system for as long as you keep the membership active. It will never increase. Total Maintenance has a tune-up special running this summer for $79, down from the normal price of $179. This is a one-time offer for one system only. They also offer a free diagnostic on second opinions on units deemed to be unrepairable. And they offer free estimates for replacements as well as commercial maintenance programs. Services include AC and heating service and replacement, electrical service, plumbing service, as well as generator service and installation. They are total maintenance. Find them at tm-ac.com or give them a call at 504-841-3300 or if you're in the Baton Rouge area, 225-480-1000. Martin Wine and Spirits is home to a selection of hand-picked barrel select bourbon, whiskeys, and much, much more. They are family owned and operated since 1946 and specialize in wine, spirits, gourmet food, gift baskets, catering, and tasting events. They have many locations, so they're never too far away. You can check them out in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, and Baton Rouge. Or if it's more convenient, you can always shop online. Whether you're a wine novice or a seasoned collector, you'll enjoy the Martin Wine and Spirit experience. Score big with kickoff combos at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. Comes with fried shrimp and your choice of soft shell crab traditional or our famous thin fried catfish, all served with garlic herb fries. Starting at only $10.99, only at New Orleans Hamburger and Seafood Company. There's nothing quite like the feeling of stepping into your dream home. At Jefferson Financial Federal Credit Union, we can help make that dream a reality with a team dedicated to you. When you partner with Jefferson Financial, you do so for the life of the loan. Having a single point of contact when questions arise is invaluable. Our experts are here to guide you every step of the way. There's no better time to invest in your future. Apply online at jeffersonfinancial.org. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing lender. Whether you are a local New Orleanian or a fan in town for the game, get your pre- and post-game fired up at Aaron Rose. Local chaos and local love for the black and gold. Wake up and live with daily drink specials, mimosas, screwdrivers, Bloody Marys, and hot or frozen Irish coffees, all just $3 or $4 between 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Aaron Rose, half a block from Bourbon Street in the French Quarter, 811 Conti Street. Looking for the ultimate game day experience? Come to the Queen Casino in Baton Rouge. Savor game day platters and snacks, plus drink specials at 1717 Kitchen and Cocktails. Wall-to-wall, state-of-the-art TVs mean you'll see every touchdown, Hail Mary, and big turnover in crystal clear HD. Place your bets and feel the thrill of every play with our DraftKings Sportsbook. So come out for game day and let our team make you the MVP. The Queen Casino in Baton Rouge, where every moment is a win. Welcome back to the Mobile Oshner Health Podcast Studio here at PJ's Coffee on 2600 Airline Drive. It is now time for our next segment presented by Aaron Rose. Mike, you got a chance to talk to St. Sports Science Director Matt Ray yesterday about Taysom Hill. And look, man. That's a real good story. If y'all haven't checked it out, make sure that you hop on NewOrleans.football and check it out. But Mike, kind of detail what, what was going on in there. Yeah, I'm not going to give away all the details of the article, not because I want you to sign up and pay for it. But I because do. I want you to do that. Please do that. <laughs> not only because I want you to sign Camp up and pay 24. for it. 24. But because the term, I mean, there's a lot of detail in here. It's a fascinating conversation. We sat down and talked to Matt Ray for over 30 minutes. But what I will add to this story is – I don't know if I could properly convey in this story Ray's enthusiasm. This is a guy who's dedicated his life. He's kind of a mad scientist guy. You talk to him a lot, too. He is so into his work. He's as much sort of analytics as he is medicine. He is always trying to find different ways to measure guys, different ways to find everybody's ideal weight, their ideal power, their ideal acceleration. He's got all these formulas, all these tests, and he, like – volunteered you need to sit down with me one day and let me just talk to you uh, about Taysom Hill for 30 minutes and his quote was from my standpoint as a sports scientist strength and condition coach it's like you look for things that are just so unique that you're never going to experience in your career you haven't seen and I've never seen anything like this and I doubt I'm ever going to see it again he he treats working with Taysom Hill like you know like he gets Project. to work with Iron yeah. Man you know what I mean like <laughs> And, and I really think that's what Taysom Hill is. And he said everything 
about uh, so they have 10 metrics that they use to measure guys some are speed on the field like the next gen stats that you can see some are things they do in the weight room some they put a tether on them and, and match their explosiveness how much resistance they can handle how much they can squat and he said in those 10 categories Taysom hill ranks first in three of them by a wide margin top 10 in nine of them and the only one he's not top 10 in is top speed and he's 235 pounds so that's not a surprise he's top 20 in that he said no one else on the team ranks ranks more than top 10 in more than three of them and all of that would be fascinating and just as crazy if Taysom hill was 24 and he just turned 34 today yep yep. (laughs) it's unbelievable and and so i mean the bottom line of all this is i I mean one uh, one thing that has bothered me a lot you know we always deal with oh national analysts aren't that plugged in youtube comments you know just say this all the people that are like i'm so sick of Taysom hill or only sean payton like Taysom hill no everyone who's ever come across Taysom hill is like this is this is somebody the likes of which we've never seen before which is why when sean payton and pete carmichael and that staff are finally gone and a brand new staff comes in they look like they're going to use Taysom hill even more than the old staff did this is not just some weird sean payton fetish you know yeah no doubt um yeah, I mean, it, the criticism on Taysom, it's just all, it's always been the usage. And I, I think the right way, there's a better way to use them, a worse way to use them. Uh, I didn't hate the way he was used, but I think there's a better way. And But, yeah, it, like criticizing him as an athlete or a football player or a viable NFL player has always been the most insane thing in the world. But I do think if Taysom started out in the role that we're about to see, people would love him. They would love him. Like, it would be completely different. I think – I think where a lot of the criticism comes is that, and I look, there's a valid side to this, and we could say 5.6 yards per carry per this run in this setting or whatever, but there is a valid criticism for taking out your starting quarterback for somebody else to come in and take snaps and taking them out of the flow of the game. There's a valid criticism for it. And, like, I, I've read a lot of stuff from different quarterbacks who were in those types of situations, had a hard time with it. I covered a quarterback who became the greatest of all time who had to deal with that type of situation, and that was hard for him to deal with. So I think there is a, a legitimate argument for that aspect of it, but narrowing it down to like Taysom shouldn't be on a football field or on a team or anything like that has yeah. always been been yeah. outlandish. I feel like if you love football, if you love physicality, you love Taysom Hill, you love to see him on the field be used in the multitude of different ways that he's been used in and will be used in, in this upcoming season. And it's just exciting. It's exciting to see new things be made out of the same player. Yeah, I think think it's really cool. It's just we've all sat there at some point and thought, like, why isn't Taysom a running back? And, like, now he's a running back. You know what I mean? Like, it's just – it just makes more sense. Yeah. It makes more sense. Yeah. Now let's roll into our next segment presented by Hard High Pochatula Strawberry Whiskey. A lot of things are being said about, you know, cut down day approaching and players that they will try to – listen to the quote right here – sneak someone onto the practice squad. That's a quote that, you know, we put in here. How much myth is there to that? And do you think there's some reality? Yeah, I mean, we talk about this all the time. I, I, I We were even disagreeing a little bit on, on the sideline yesterday. And, I mean, it's, it's different in every situation. I do, think, I do think fans get a little too caught up. I mean, we hype up guys like Mason Tipton or even Kevin Austin and Samson Nakua and and I feel like if those guys are super, super special, the Saints, we'll put them on the 53. They'll take an equanimity of St. Brown, and they'll, they'll say, hey, you have to wait a couple of days. They'll take a Jonathan Abram and say, hey, do us a favor. We're going to cut you. We're going to bring you back in two days on the practice squad. You'll be active by Saturday, I promise. Um, but, but the idea that if the Saints are willing to, to take one of those players, not put them on their 53, risk losing them to the practice squad, try to keep secrets or whatever – I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't always worry about that as much as, as I think some fans worry about it. But, I mean, it, it's the Mason Tipton conversation all over again. Like, he, he was so good at the beginning of camp. He got all the headlines. He hasn't played in a preseason game. I mean, is, is that a risk with somebody like that? I think it's a very real thing. I mean, Taysom Hill. Yeah. Got Taking stolen. Off waivers. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a very real thing. And, and it's a very real thing in just the way teams operate. Some people start cutting players – a little bit like early so that they can kind of get ahead of like other people making their cuts. And then you go through or like they'll cut them late to try to they'll carry them till Friday and cut them because people just once they set their roster. They, yeah, that's no, very true. There's that's no more true. like, OK, coin flip here. Do we want to look at this other guy or like, OK, we got this guy in the building. We aren't going to we aren't going to do this. Um, so I think I think it's a very real thing. 
is the level of risk as high as is probably us or even fans make it out to be but definitely us as well probably probably not in a lot of cases like like there are you know everybody has a has a rico payton on their team that they love but at the end of the day like there's that small bit of risk of like you know if you do expose them you are willing yeah. to lose them um guys that's you the, aren't willing to part. lose you, you yeah. don't but yeah i mean i think there's definitely an effort of like damn we don't want to lose guy 55 on our team yeah. but he's a little bit less valuable than this other person um i do think that the new practice squad rules and the elevations make it easier to protect your guys because of the the vet situation um where you can you know just keep someone around and then elevate them a couple times and that's another way to do it like you could keep a you know i'm just saying rico payton but like you could keep a rico payton on your team for two four six if you have a way to kind of cover that up with with these elevations and you you know you wear them out and then you have a next guy to elevate or you could do it for a couple weeks then you cut your rico then you get them on your practice squad because it's a little bit easier at that point because you are set at that point so I, I do think it's real, but I don't think it's it's as dramatic as maybe it's talked about, um, you know, in, in the media and on social media by fans. Yeah, you you worded what I was trying to say better than I did, which is not – yeah, I mean, sometimes you have a guy and you don't want to lose him, and other teams will take them. But I'm saying I don't, I don't think teams try to be like, this guy is incredibly valuable to us. He's one of our top 45 players. Yeah, no doubt. And I'm going to try to sneak him out of the practice squad. If he's in your top 45, top 50, you don't risk it. No doubt. Like, the, it's the 55th guy that you try to sneak onto the practice squad. I, I even you, think, but. like I said, I, I probably even guy 55 at this point because you have your – like like a St. Brown, if you're keeping yeah. him, he's probably in your top 45, but you are willing to cut him. Or your Tim Hightower, you are willing to cut him, and then you yeah. sign him, you know, back at, at the point that it's, it's appropriate. Now you have the practice squad again, so there's a way to do that. So – it, yeah, the, the whole, like, damn, I hope nobody notices this good player if we're going to keep him on the practice squad for the whole year. No, no, definitely not. You both mentioned him earlier, and I was saving him for this segment, but Mason Tipton, he needs to have a good game to be a part of that conversation because he showed a lot when he was out there on the field early in training camp. And I think if you put him on the practice squad and you elevate him whenever you need him throughout the season, he'll be a very, very good addition. Quick practice squad predictions. Mason Tipton, Samson Nakua, Kevin Austin Jr. Am I forgetting a young receiver? That's it. All three? Only two? I probably two. Hate to see Samson go. You're saying Tipton, Austin make the practice squad, Samson's the odd man out? Yeah. I mean, I, look, I, like, I know, like, DA, it's a question of how they feel about, like, Austin's ability with the playbook. Because, like, he. He made a, a pretty loud criticism about him, uh, like, not knowing what to do in the game. But, damn, he makes a lot of plays. Right. And, like, damn, he saves the, the quarterbacks on a lot of bad <laughs> he throws. Does. You like, can teach the rest yeah, of that. That's why, yeah. that's, why, that's why I had him up there. Because it's like you like Samson. You like what he does there in practice. You like what he does on special teams. But he hasn't really had a chance in the game to – kind of make a name but kevin austin jr in practice and in the game has made plays so that's why he's up there austin hasn't quite done it in the games like he's done it in practices but man he, yeah. he if we we're going to make a list of the if we we're going to make a list of like the 10 best catches at camp i bet austin has six of them i bet yeah. nakua has two or three of them but austin has done it on a more consistent basis that's all nakua ha has done is do that about once every three practices or whatever like that um shaq davis was the other name that, that shaq davis is a yeah. great example of like a sneak through don't lose them oh my god they're idiots yeah. for like allowing this guy to get away and then like he's back you know what i mean that's <laughs> that's usually that's usually what they are that's yeah. usually what those guys are like they usually aren't a taste of mel they're usually they're usually a very dramatic like cut down thing oh, my God, the team's so stupid. You see it all across the league, and then, like, a lot of those guys don't end up being anything. Like, that's really – that's usually what it is. Yeah. Well, now it's time to get into our Martin Wine and Spirits questions of the day. Martin's is home to a wide selection of hand-picked barrels to like bourbon, whiskeys, and more. Martin's so much more than just wine. Today's first question comes from Smoke. Smoke asks, is D.A. bluffing, or will Kendra R Miller really not make the roster? It's it's pot. I mean, it's definitely possible. It's definitely possible. I I don't see him getting cut. I would I would predict him on the team, but I mean, it's it's absolutely one hundred percent possible at this point. And I, you know, it's it's going to be interesting. I mean, you know, it's it's a situation where, I mean, he's he's taking a hard stance on the player, and you know, I, I I could see it going either way. I, the door is definitely open to any possibility. First part of that question, no, he's not bluffing. 
he's dead serious about what he's saying. Uh, but I think this thing has solved itself. Um, I think Kendrick Miller goes on IR. I mean, they have new IR rules where you don't even have to make the original 53 anymore to be designated to return. I, I think Kendrick Miller's on IR to start the season. We haven't even seen him work to the side with trainers more than once or twice. Um, certainly is not going to play in this preseason game. Isn't going to be doing any meaningful team drills when they come back next week. They're already going to be game planning for Carolina. So he's got to be 110% healthy before they let him sniff the active roster. And I think he'll do that on injured reserve. Yeah, it became a barbershop topic. Like, how much does he have to work to get back in DA's good graces? That's a good question. That's a really good question. You just wanted to bring attention to your fresh cut. Hey, man, shout off, out my whatever. boy Benny, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's a, uh, yeah, how does he get back? Well, first of all, we're going to see, I think, Alvin Kamara, Jamal Williams, and now Jordan Mims is absolutely going to make my projected 53-man roster. And we're going to see those guys play. If they get off to a good start, Kendry Miller could be out of sight, out of mind. One or two of those guys gets hurt. He could be thrown in out of necessity when he's healthy. And then if he shows on the field what he's shown every single time he's ever gotten on the field, well, then as frustrated as he might be, you, you can't deny the talent. But um, he's going to need, you know, he's going to need one of those three guys to slip up. They're all going to get the first turn, I think. I don't know, man, if this dude starts on IR, I, I don't know if he ever gets on the field. Yeah. I, like, it's just kind of – it feels like the, the bus is moving. And either you're ready to get on it or you're not. But, like, I, I don't – Man, I don't know. Like he, like I have no idea. How, this, this is this is one that's that's beyond me. I have no idea how this situation is going to play out. The next question comes from Crew Sice. Does Kyle Hergel have a chance to make the fifty-three man roster? He's on. He's and on. can he push for the left guard starting the spot? Yeah, he can. He's on, and he can. Yes. Yeah. He, he here is a guy that they cannot afford to try to sneak onto the practice squad. No, I don't think. I think he's showing things on the game tape. Um, People read reports. People know how high they are on him in camp. Um, I would say, yes, he can compete for the starting left guard job, but I just I don't like the concept of being sneaky about that. If you were considering that, yeah. he should have gotten a lot more run than he's gotten so far. I mean, Lucas Patrick has taken 95% of all the snaps at left guard with the ones in the last couple games and in most of the practices the last couple weeks. If – if Hergel was going to be in an open competition there, I'd like to see. I'd like to see him getting half of those snaps. There's 17 weeks, so, so you know what I mean. Yeah. Like he might not start out at Lucas Patrick might yeah, start out at true, fold. Um, they might find out Landon Young's not good at it, and then you yep. know you get the Hergel yep. or Hergel's ahead of him. He he has gotten some of the reps though. So, like yeah, I, he's starting. Yeah, to. I mean he's 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 and then a lot of second team reps there. Yep. I think I think it's definitely I think it's open for him. I think yep. it is. I, th I think there's a chance at some point this season we see him start a game there for sure. That'll do it for this episode of New Orleans Football. We appreciate y'all for stopping in today. For those who are already subscribed, stick around because we have overtime today. And for those who aren't, as Nick mentioned earlier, Camp 24 is going to run out. So make sure that you get in there and stick around and keep up with us because if you want the best Saints coverage, New Orleans Football is the place to be. Catch you next time.